Welcome to Math Basics for DET Verifiers. That's for Duct and Envelope Tightness Verifiers. It's a new certification in Illinois. This is going to take you to, through the math basics that you're going to need in order to succeed in this course and get the certification at the end of the day when you take the exam. I'm Corbett Lensford. I'm the Executive Director of the Illinois Association of Energy Raters and Home Performance Professionals. I'm also the founder of the Building Performance Workshop, uh, which is uh, who is sponsoring this video. So let's go ahead and get started. First of all, uh, we're going to get into geometry, and there's a little bit of physics in the training as well. The geometry is what we're going to focus on in this video. So uh, I hope you have a calculator with you. We're going to go ahead and do some stuff here. Um, I'll ask you to pause the video and go ahead and work some things out. Uh, first thing that we need to review is one-dimensional measurements. This is just a line. So this line is, let's say, 18.7 feet long. We don't work in feet and inches uh, for the DET verifier. You're going to work in feet with decimal places after it. So the units that we're working in here is just FT, feet, which is a one-dimensional measurement. Two-dimensional measurements are measured in square feet, which is FT, with a number two after it. That's for two dimensions. That is width times length, or length times height, or any anything that's basically a flat panel. Uh, so whole numbers are what we're going to be using for the DET verifier. So if you take your calculator and you just multiply 18.7, times 13.2, it will give you a number that is 246.84. Um, you can just go ahead and round that up to 247. You round it up because of the fact that the decimal places are over 0.5. The next thing we're going to get into is uh, you're going to use the two-dimensional measurements, the square feet, to measure areas. This is for conditioned floor areas of houses. So you don't need to know any math that is not practical for you to use in the field. That's what we're going to focus on explicitly in this video and also in the class that you take uh, anywhere in Illinois. So the conditioned floor area is also called CFA. You might hear me say that in this video and also out in the field. Uh, generally, you're going to have to deal with houses that are shaped like this. This is a bird's eye view of a house. Um, it's got little nooks and crannies sticking out. It's got dormers, things like that. So you're not just going to be measuring a length and a width multiplying them together and figuring out square feet. You have to break it up and figure out how the place is put together. Um, and that is done by just breaking up into bite-sized pieces. There is a rectangle here. There is a rectangle here. And there is a rectangle here. Worst case scenario, you'll have some rectangles and some triangles put together. But everything is able to be broken up into a series of rectangles and triangles, which makes your job much easier. Don't try to do everything at once. So to simply figure out how much total condition floor area we've got, we just figure out the individual areas of these rectangles. So the first rectangle uh, on the left there is 21 feet uh, long by 8 feet wide. So go ahead and figure out on your calculator 21 times 8, and you should get 168 square feet. The second rectangle is you've got to do a little bit of, of math here. So we know that it's 12 feet wide because we measured it. We know that it's 16 feet long, though, because 21 over here, uh, excuse me, 21 feet here minus the 5 feet that it takes to get down to here. 21 minus 5 is 16, so this length must be 16. So 12 times 16 is 192 square feet. And rectangle number three, since we know that this here is 12 uh, and this entire thing is 16, this must be 4. So we're going to get into 4 and 4, that's 16 square feet. So you simply add the three of those together and you would get 376 square feet. That is our total conditioned floor area for this house. And we're going to use that for our diagnostics that you guys are going to be doing for the duct and envelope tightness verification. All right, so now we need to know about volume. When you're using a blower door, and the blower door is the most important tool in home performance, you need to know what the volume of a house is. This is not generally given to you on a set of plans. The architects are not calculating condition volume, so this is up to the DET verifier to calculate this. So it's a three-dimensional measurement. Um, because of that three dimensions, we're going to represent it in the units cubic feet. That's feet with a three after it. That's three-dimensional. So you simply multiply the CFA, the condition floor area, by the ceiling height. Or you can do the area times the depth. If you've got a flat wall and you know that the place is like a barn, you measure the area of the front wall 
multiply it by the depth of the entire barn and you're set. So if the walls are uh, nine feet high with a flat ceiling, then we simply take the 376 square feet that we know is the conditioned floor area, multiply it by nine, and we get this cubic footage of the volume. That's 3,384 cubic feet. So now we've figured out the condition volume of the space and we're ready to do our blow order test on it. Now, you might come up against a house that looks like this. It would have two distinctly different shapes. It's, again, very simple. Uh, just like we added together the areas of rectangles, we can add together the volumes of different shaped cubes. So uh, we're going to go with the original first and then we're going to add on this addition. The volume of number one, that's 16 feet wide by 26 feet long by 9 feet high, is 3744. Uh, the volume of number 2, which would be 13 times 15 times 11, gives you 2145. Now to figure out the total volume, we just add the two of these together, and we would get 5889 cubic feet. And again, we're ready to do our blow order test on this house. Uh, now, in order to uh, get volume, you can also take the area of a wall and go depth-wise. So obviously it's width times height times length, or it, it doesn't matter what order you go in. It could be 20 times 10 times 36, or 36 times 10 times 20. It, you'll give you the same answer no matter what. 7,200 square feet. Now instead, let's do a little bit, uh, something that might be easier for you when you're actually measuring this. Let's take just the area of this front wall, since we know that the building does not change shape the entire length of it. We figure out the front wall, which is 10 times 20, which is 200 square feet. We'll multiply that by the length of the room, which is 36, and we would get 200 times 36. Go ahead and do it yourself. The same answer, 7,200 square feet. So again, it doesn't matter what order of operations you use, whether it's 10 times 20 times 36, or whatever, you get the same answer uh, no matter what. So that's a little trick that you can use in the field. Now sometimes you'll have a house that's shaped like this where we've got the cubes instead of next to each other on top of each other. Again, very simple. So you simply figure out what the first floor volume is, and that is 10 by 20 by 30. That should give you 6,000 cubic feet. The second floor volume should be 8 times 34, and it's still 20 feet wide, which is the same thing that we measured down here. That's the exact same width that we've got here, since they're stacked directly on top of each other. And that should give you 5,440. It's a little less because the ceiling height is less, even though the floor area is more. And you add the two together, and you get 11,440 cubic feet. I do hope that you're following along with this. Even if you've done this before, it's good just to get a refresher. Most of my students at the Building Performance Workshop haven't done uh, math even like this um, since high school. So it's a good idea just to kind of get your feet wet with the calculator again. Okay, sloped ceilings. This is where it starts getting complicated. You will see this in the field. So the vaulted ceiling uh, at the middle of this room here is 14 feet above the finished floor. Uh, this house has insulation along the ceiling, which means now we're going to count the entire volume of this entire um, shape which means we have to count at the triangle here. Now the triangle is a little bit different. So we're going to, first of all, go through calculating what the triangle is. The uh, triangle is 20 feet wide, and the height of it from the base to the very tip here is 6 feet. Okay, so in order to figure this out, we need to know what the height and the base are, and we've, we've already got those. Now the calculation for this is simply half times base times height. So we take uh, half times 20 times 6. And when you do that on your calculator, you should come out with the same answer I'm getting, which is 60 square feet. OK, so now the volume of this vault can simply be figured out by taking that area. And since we know that for the entire depth of that shape, it does not change shape, we can simply take the area of our flat triangle times 34 feet, which is the depth. And we get 2,040 cubic feet.
So again, you don't have to worry about cutting up the place into a bunch of little tiny triangles and adding them all together. It's a one-step calculation. Now let's go ahead and, and do an example that's a little bit different. This is a 15 feet above the finished floor. Okay, so we've got nine feet high, and then the uh, peak of the vault here is 15 feet. That means that between nine and 15, this is also going to be six feet high. 24 feet wide for the entire house and 36 feet long. So we've got the base and the height. So we'll go ahead and do the rectangle wall area. First, we'll break the, the wall up into bite-sized pieces. The rectangle wall area would be 9 times 24, which is 216 square feet. The triangle wall area is half times 6 times 24, which will give you 72. And again, on a calculator, instead of worrying about half, you could just do, use 0.5 if you haven't been doing that already. And now we simply add those two up. 20, uh, 216 plus 72 gives you 288 square feet. Now we know what that flat front wall area total is, and we could just multiply that by the depth. So in order to get the volume of this house, we take 288 times 36 feet long, Go ahead and do that on your calculator, and you should get the same answer that I get, and that's 10,368 cubic feet. Now, I am taking my time with this because sometimes your calculator will lie to you because I, if you're like me, you're a little bit clumsy and you might hit the wrong button on your calculator, come up with an answer that's totally not right and not realize it. So it's really important to go ahead and use the calculator as much as possible and also double check it with your common sense because sometimes if you put down that the volume of this place is 10 cubic feet, then you run your blow order test, it's going to fail no matter what. Someone's going to pay you several hundred dollars to do that test. And if they figure out that you didn't even add up the house cubic uh, footage correctly, they're probably not going to hire you again. So you definitely do want to make sure to actually dot your I's and cross your T's and use the calculator and go ahead and run these calculations along with me. And likewise, in the, in the class when you take it. So once we know the volume of a house, we can run the blow order test. You're going to learn how to do that in the class. We obviously can't do that in a video. Uh, so the conditioned floor, uh, excuse me, the total conditioned volume of this house that we're looking at, and this is including that vaulted ceiling, is 10,368 cubic feet. Now the calculation to figure out what that means in blower door terminology is for code in Illinois for the 2012 IECC, we're going to be using ACH50. That stands for air changes per hour at 50 pascals. You don't have to know what that means right now. Again, we're going to go into that in the class. That number, which is what the code cites, equals the CFM50, which is the number that your blower door tells you this house actually leaks, times 60, which takes you into um, hours instead of minutes, divided by the total volume. Now we know the volume. Let's say that the CFM that we tested the house at is 1,200. That's what our blow order tells us the house leaks. So 1,200 is what the blow order says. We take 1,200 times 60 divided by our volume, which is 10,368, and we would get an ACH at 50 of 6.9. Okay, now percentages are something that you can use as a, as a tool to help you with what we're going to do next, which is duct leakage. You might have a couple different duct systems in a house, so I want to make sure that this is clear to you as a as a reminder, because I know it's been a long time since high school for me, and I imagine for you as well. Fractions, decimals, and percentages are all different ways of saying or writing a part of a whole. Uh, percentages specifically are used to express how large or small one quantity is in relation to another quantity with that percent sign, and you can also do it as a decimal. A percentage is a way of expressing a number as a fraction of 100, so we always use 100% as meaning all of it as the whole. So 100% is the whole, and we use different percentages. 90% would be 90% of 100%. So first of all, we want to figure out on this first example that we used back at the beginning of the video, uh, the rectangle 1 area here has a different duct system than the rest of the rectangles. So we want to know what uh, floor area that is. If you had happened to write down all of the areas that you were recording when you made these measurements, which is the way that I generally teach people to do it. Go ahead and record all your work, make very detailed notes. That way you don't have to go backwards in time and do this. 
then that's best. But if you've got the total area and you just want to figure out what portion it is, then we can just take the area of that rectangle, take the whole home, which is 376, and if you want to know what percentage that is, you take the part divided by the whole, which would be 168 divided by 376, and that gives you 45%. So 0.45 in percentage language is 45%. You can just multiply it by 100 to figure out what the actual number would be. Again, it's uh, just 0.45 is 45%. Okay, so 45% of this home's uh, condition floor area is served by this green rectangle's duct system. Okay, now we're going to, uh, because the code is written in duct leakage per condition floor area, that's per 100 cubic feet of floor area, uh, we're going to teach you how to do this right now. So first you would test the duct leakage. Again, you're going to learn that in the class. You're going to determine the square footage of condition floor area, CFA, that is served by this duct system that you just tested. It's not the whole floor area of the house. Because for example, if you have a, a 20,000 square foot house and you test a duct system that only serves 1,000 square feet and that duct system has 500 CFM of leakage, that's very leaky. Half of that, uh, of that system's area is basically represented by a CFM of leakage. That's massive. Um, but if you divide it by the entire floor area, that would be crazy. You would pass even though you have a massive failure. So it's very important that you know what CFA is served. You divide that leakage by the condition floor area that, again, is served. And then you multiply the answer by 100 to obtain the duct leakage per 100 square feet. So let's just do this real quick. The example would be, uh, when we run the duct testing fan, it tells us that our leakage for this duct system is 118 CFM at 25 pascals. Again, you don't have to know what that is right now. You're going to learn it in a class. The system serves 2,300 square feet of this home. So we simply take 118 divided by 2,300 and multiply that number by 100. And we would get 5.1 CFM per 100 square feet. Now the code is 4 CFM or less. So this system obviously would not pass that. Let's use another example here. We've got 24 feet wide, 36 feet long. This is the same house that we used earlier. The uh, tested CFM from the duct leakage test was 63 CFM at 25. The condition floor area that serves when you take 24 times 36, again, is 864. So we take the CFM 25, which is 63, divided by 864 times 100. Go ahead and do that. And you should get 7.3 CFM per 100 square feet. Okay, great. That basically covers the geometry and the calculations that you'll need to do for the DET verifier course. Uh, I hope that when you do take the course that you do get certified and that you have a great time uh, serving the uh, people of Illinois and the builders and everybody's happy. Our buildings are going to be great. We're really excited about this code uh, update, and uh, I will talk to you soon. Thanks very much for watching.